So question seven says, find the domain of the function. The function is f of x is equal to negative two times x plus four. So the domain is, and they want you to type this answer in what we call that interval notation. So some things to pick up on is this. For a function, the domain of a function always begins as a set of real numbers. In other words, we're assuming every number out there will work. So that means we're talking all number math. We're talking about negative number math. We're talking about fractions. We're talking about decimals. And we're talking about radicals. Those are all what we call real numbers. Any number that looks in one of those categories is called a real number. So there's one thing that we cannot do. If the value of x cannot result in a y value, then the x value must be removed from the domain. So one thing that will create a domain restriction is division by zero. Division by zero cannot be calculated and is described as undefined. So remember, if I give you a problem like, you know, 10 divided by two, what does that equal? In other words, how many twos does it take to get 10? Well, that'd be two, four, six, eight, 10. That'd be five twos is 10. So 10 divided by two is equal to five. Now, if I wanna check it, what we can do is we can go the other direction and think backwards. Five times two must get you back to the 10. So does five times two get you back to 10? It does. So remember, every division problem can be double checked by going the other direction. So the question is, if I start with this 10 again, if I divide it by zero, what does it give me? So if you have 10 and divide it among nothing, well, that doesn't even make any sense to begin with. Or how many zeros does it take to get 10? Well, you, zeros won't go into 10 because you just will just keep getting zero. So again, what does this give us? Well, we would say this is undefined. Some people have a tendency to say, well, that's zero. Well, 10 divided by zero, if you say it's equal to zero, does zero zeros give you 10? In other words, does zero times zero give you 10? No, it does not. So, well, well the answer's gotta be 10. Well, 10 divided by zero, if you say it's equal to 10, does 10 zeros give you 10? Does 10 times zero give you 10? And that's how it does crash. So if the zero is in the denominator, this that's what we call division by zero. And division by zero makes no sense. It's described at this point as undefined. So if you do that into a calculator, if you divide 10 divided by zero into your calculator, notice that it says there's an error. Attempted calculation contains division by zero, calculation fails. So remember, for a domain value to work, it has to result in, an X, in a Y value. Notice that when I do my calculations, I do not get a Y value, so it crashes. So if, if there is a X value that makes the denominator equal to zero, we have to exclude it. Well, if you look at this problem right here, notice that we don't have a fraction. All we have is negative two times some value and we're adding four to it. So as far as a function goes, you know, in this problem, you're going to be putting something into the formula. The formula says you're going to be multiplying negative two times whatever you put in, and then you're adding four. Well, I can multiply negative two times any number and add four to it. And that is that is result, result in a y value. Now, I may have to use the calculator sometimes to get that answer, but I can get that answer. So in this situation, since no fraction appears in my formula, the variable is not in the denominator. The domain is just going to be the set of real numbers. Using interval notation, the left bound is negative infinity, the right bound is positive infinity, and since these are open intervals, we use parentheses there. So that's how we would describe that domain. So again, domain is going to start out as the set of real numbers, and then we're, we're going to try to figure out if there's any values to remove. So if you do see x in the denominator, so again, if x appears in the denominator, there could be a restriction. So that we're going to be setting the denominator equal to zero and solving for x and that's the values of, of the domain we're going to exclude. So again, in question seven, X was not in the denominator. So therefore we had no domain restrictions 
and therefore the domain is the set of all real numbers.